this YouTube channel just passed 10,000 subscribers. I figure I have to make my videos more annoying now with jump cuts, so I'm more like a YouTuber. Hit that subscribe button, tickle the notification bell, right? Well, no. I'm not gonna start making lower quality videos now that more people are watching. Or will you? No, I, I won't. Anyways, this YouTube channel has more than 10,000 subscribers. One of my favorite YouTube channels, the Colin Furs channel, has a tradition of making crazy fireworks videos for every milestone. So I thought maybe I could do something too. And so I tweeted. And then Dan Linder responded. He said, you could use Ansible to build a 10,000 node Kubernetes cluster in AWS. Well, I thought it over a bit and looked up the Kubernetes resource limits. And it turns out you can't actually run more than 5,000 nodes in a single cluster, so I couldn't do that. But maybe I could get 10,000 pods running in a large-ish cluster. One Kubernetes pod for each channel subscriber. I started going down a pretty fruitless path, but at least it was educational, sort of. I decided to try stuffing a 100 node 10,000 pod cluster into AWS's free tier using T3 micro instances. In hindsight, that's not a great idea for a lot of different reasons, but I still tried. I grabbed a CloudFormation EKS build example from my book, Ansible for Kubernetes, and I modified it to build a 100 node EKS cluster. Nice and easy, except it really wasn't. First, I ran into a bug with my templates, so I had to go file an issue about that in my book's repository. Then I ran into AWS service limits, not once, but twice. Apparently, the instance limit is actually a vCPU limit, something I seem to forget every time I start using a new AWS account and have to deal with these limits. So once I got all the limits to a place where I could build my cluster, I kicked off my Ansible playbook and waited. And then I waited some more. I'm not really sure what happens when you start up a new EKS cluster, but whatever it does, it takes an eternity. Once all that was done, my playbook deployed a Hello Node app with 10,000 replicas. I sat there and I watched the rollout and I felt pretty good about it. I waited and waited and it looked like things were working. But after it was done, when I was about to finish the build and start working on this video, I noticed that most of the 10,000 pods were not actually running. They were pending. And I smacked myself in the face when I realized AWS EKS nodes use VPC CNI networking. How's that for a bunch of acronyms? Which severely limits the number of pods you can run in smaller instances like the T3 micro, which can only run four pods per instance. Well, after a few minutes trying to figure out the right type and quantity of instances, I realized that running 14 M5 16X large nodes would require a service limit increase to almost 1,000 vCPUs. And that was not gonna happen for my brand new AWS account. So what other options did I have? I could throw in the towel, but that would make for a pretty disappointing end to this video. My next step was seeing if it was easy to switch from VPC CNI networking to something like Weave or Calico, but it wasn't that easy. It's possible, but it's not very fun, and this project already gobbled up enough of my time. I mean, it's not like I'm celebrating an anniversary or birth or something. All right, so EKS is out. What other options do I have? Well, I've been playing a lot with K3S lately for my Raspberry Pi cluster. Maybe K3S is easier to deploy into EC2. It's supposed to be lightweight, so it might actually run better in the free tier instances that I've been using. I tried that and spoiler alert, free tier instances don't have enough resources to deploy things on a very large scale. Just don't even try it. So then I changed things up a bit and made a fresh cluster. This time I used C5 2X large instance for one K3S master and then 100 C5 large instances for nodes. I set up two CloudFormation templates to deploy everything. I built an Ansible playbook to deploy the CloudFormation templates, and then I cloned Rancher's K3S playbook to run it after setting up all the instances. I used the AWS CLI to get all the instances IP addresses and put them into the K3S Ansible playbook host inventory. After tweaking a couple settings in the K3S playbook's group vars and running the playbook to set up K3S, the cluster was up and running. I logged into the master instance and checked all the nodes with kubectl, I still call it kubectl a lot of times though, and made sure there were 100 nodes running. Then I deployed the hello node deployment, I edited it, and I set the replicas to 10,000 and started monitoring the pod rollout. 
I waited and waited and waited and waited some more and it worked. Amazing, excellent. Overjoyed, enraptured, entranced. Are we ready? Yes, good, in we go. And of course, right after I'd finished all the K3S setup and was making this video, AWS emailed me and approved a limit increase to 1,000 vCPUs. So I could have just used 14 M5 16X large instances in the simpler first example using EKS. So I did. And it was pretty simple, even though it was a bit expensive. I ran through all the same steps as the first time, but this time using the larger instances. After another half hour of waiting and waiting and waiting, and waiting a little bit more, I wound up with 10,000 Kubernetes pods running on AWS EKS. And here are those 10,000 pods in all their glory for your enjoyment. If you want, you can adopt one of the pods, but don't get too attached. I deleted them already because I don't have the money to pay $31,000 a month to keep all these pods running. I might have to get a loan to pay for the cluster for the hour it was running during this video. In the end, this whole process took about 10 times longer than I planned. To be honest, according to my wife, that's pretty common for my own project estimates. But I learned something, so it's all good. I also decided to put up all the code I used when making these clusters in an open source GitHub repository, so maybe some of it could help you with your own Kubernetes clusters. The link to that repository is in the description below. If you thought this was mildly interesting, please consider subscribing and check out my Raspberry Pi Kubernetes cluster series. And to everyone who's helped me reach this milestone, thank you so much for subscribing. Until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling.